Python pals, this is Prof G, and I'm touched that you continue to watch our CircuitPython lessons, which is appropriate because we're about to work with Capacitive Touch using the Adafruit MPR121 Stem QT breakout board, which offers a touchingly large 12 Capacitive Touch pads, each of which is alligator clip friendly, and which can sense your capacitive presence or that of any other object that can convey capacitance. Now conveniently, this board also has Stem QT ports, so you can use this on any CircuitPython board that has a Stem QT or Quick port, or as I'll demonstrate with the Raspberry Pi Pico, we can wire up a Stem QT port to easily plug the touchpads into our board. First I'll show you how we can set up and program this board. After this I'll demonstrate what's called debouncing so that each touch only registers one touch instead of repeated touches. Then we'll have a challenge where we'll also wire up a NeoPixel strip and flash different colors depending on the pad that's touched. So let's learn my conductive companions! So this is the board we're using, and at the time that I'm recording this video, it costs less than $7. It also has Stemma QT ports on it. I'll be demonstrating this on a Raspberry Pi Pico W. The same code and wiring will work unchanged on the base Pico board as well. But this can work on any board that has a Stemma QT cable wired to it, or that comes with a Stemma QT port. I'm going to assume that you've worked through the earlier lesson on how to connect a Stemma QT port to a Raspberry Pi Pico. If you need a refresher, here's the wiring diagram. The blue wire goes to GP4, yellow wire to GP5. Power should go to 3.3 volt out, and ground can use any ground. Now here's how we work with this board. First, make sure that you import the Adafruit underscore MPR121 library. Now we don't need the Touch IO library that we used when working with the Circuit Playground boards, but when using the MPR121, we do need this library. Now remember, you need to have these libraries in your LIB folder on the board for things to work properly, and also remember, we usually import our board library in most examples we work with, and we also often use the time library. Then we'll create an I squared C object, as we do in most cases when working with Stemma QT. In a prior lesson, we pointed out that you should use this code if you have a Pico board or a board with a built-in Stemma QT port. That's I2C equals board dot all caps Stemma underscore I2C open and close parens. But if your board isn't a Pico or doesn't have a Stemma QT port, then try this code with just board dot I2C open and close parens. And if that doesn't work, Consult the Adafruit Learn Guide for your board. Then we'll create an object that will hold all 12 touchpads, which I'll call touch underscore pad. And we do that with the Adafruit underscore MPR121 library. Use dot notation to access the MPR121 class. And we pass in the I squared C object that we just created above. Then if we want to detect if a pad has been touched, we just refer to an individual pad via its index number, so we can check all pads using a for loop like this, looping through a range of 12, which will take us from index value 0 through 11, and if an individual touch pad's dot value property is true, then that pad has been touched. So why don't we implement this code here, which will simply print the number of the pad being touched, over to Moo. So I'll enter my comment using the MPR121, and I'm going to import board and comma Adafruit underscore MPR121. Then I'm going to create my I squared C object with I2C equals board period, and in all caps, stemma underscore I2C, open and close parens. Remember, you'll have different code in here if you don't have a stemma QT port or you're not using a Raspberry Pi Pico board. And then I'm going to create my touchpad object, which I'm going to call touch underscore pad, set that equal to Adafruit underscore MPR121, that's the library we just imported, dot, and in capital letters, MPR121, and in parentheses, pass in the I squared C object we just created. Then in my while true loop, make sure that you add your colon at the end, for I in range 12, in parentheses, add the colon at the end, that will loop through all 12 pads in the touchpad, then we can check each pad individually, if touch underscore pad in brackets I dot value colon, if that is true, then we'll print an F string with print, open and close parens, F, open and close double quotes, you touched pad number, and then curly braces, exclamation point, and in the curly braces we'll pass in I. Now that's it. Let's make sure that we plug our MPR121 into our Stem QT cable. You can see a little light goes on on the board. That indicates everything's powered up and ready to go. Open the serial monitor. So let's save this program to our CircuitPy volume as code.py, and let's experience the magic. So I've got my board here, and let's press pad 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at that, 0. All right, down on the bottom, I scroll my finger across. The one issue we have, though, is we're registering lots of taps in here. These pads aren't debounced. Remember, a debounced button only registers one press each time a finger is pressed on a different pad. But here, we're registering touches as long as our finger is down. That's why we have lots of repeated print statements as long as our finger's on a pad. Sometimes we don't want to report all those repeated touches. We just want to report one touch at a time. So to do that, 
we should debounce the pads. Now, if you were working through our Blue Fruit lessons, when we sent messages between two Circuit Playground Blue Fruit boards, we showed that you can debounce touchpads too. Let's show you how you can do that with the MPR121 as well. Before I do that, I'm gonna quickly double click on my code.py tab, navigate to my Circuit Python School folder, and save this code as MPR121-Pico. Then close this and reopen code.py on my board. So here's a look at the code that we're gonna write and everything will change to get to bouncing working is highlighted in red. So first we need to import the button class from Adafruit underscore debouncer. Whenever we use capital B button, that'll create a debounced button. So that button only registers one press or one release at a time. It won't send multiple presses as long as the finger is held down. That's what we had before. That's a touchpad that's not debounced. Now up here, we create an MPR121 object. Remember that's got 12 elements, one for each touchpad with a value we could check to see if it was touched, but now we're not going to use this object to detect a touch anymore. Instead, we're going to loop through all of these touchpads and we're going to create an element of a new list called pads that will create a debounced button using the button class. And each time we create that button, we'll pass in a touchpad so we can use that to create the debounced button. And for each button, we'll also set value when pressed equal to true. Now, we didn't need the second parameter in our lesson when we set up debounced buttons with the Pico, but we do need this second parameter with the MPR121 because these touchpads report true when pressed, whereas the default used for the button class is to report false when pressed. That's what you get with external buttons. So just remember, when working with touchpads, make sure you have the second parameter in the button setup, value underscore when underscore pressed equals true. You won't need that when you're wiring up standard external buttons. Now, by looping through each of the touchpads in the MPR121 and using these as an input for creating a new button for each touchpad, we're actually using touchpads to create a list of debounced buttons that use a touchpad for input. Next, down here, those of you that have worked through previous lessons with debouncing might remember, we have to call this update method on every single button each time we want to check its state. So in this case, on every single pad, what that does is it gets the latest state of the button, whether or not it's been pressed or released since the last time it was pressed or released. And here we're only checking dot pressed, although we could check dot released if we wanted to check the released state too. Now, if this is true, we'll print out you touched pad number, whichever one was touched. So let's modify our code and get debounce touchpads working. So first I'll change the comment to read debouncing touchpads on the MPR 121. Then we import our button class with from Adafruit underscore debouncer import capital B button. I'll put in a comment above this code just to indicate that we use this to configure the MPR 121 board. And down here, I'll write a comment on the code we're about to write. We're gonna create a pads list and fill it with buttons with a capital B using the touch pads as input for creating button objects. And remember each button with a capital B is debounced. So first I'll create our empty list that's gonna be called pads. We'll set that equal to open and close square bracket. And that'll be a list which will hold our debounced pads, which are buttons. And sorry, I wrote array in the comment here. It's called a list in Python. I always get that confused because I teach a Swift class where lists in Python are very similar to arrays in Swift. Then we'll use a for loop to go through all of those touch pads in our MPR 121 object. So we'll say for, and what we call this T underscore pad in touch underscore pad colon. Remember, touchpad is this 12 element MPR121 object we created up here. And we'll go through this array 12 times and we'll say pads.append. So we're gonna create a new value and add it to pads, which is capital B button and in parens, that's gonna be the T pad, our current touchpad, comma, and then we'll also say value underscore when underscore pressed, and that should also equal capital T true. Make sure you end this with two closing parentheses. So when that's done, we've got a list called pads. Each element in the list is a debounced button. And in our while true loop, we had a literal the number 12 in here. It would probably be better programming practice if we replace that with len for the length and in parentheses pads. If we ever change this with oh, some kind of sensor that might have more or less than 12 pads, well, if it created its range based on the length of pads, we wouldn't have to change that literal 12 down here. The code otherwise does the same thing. Now, whenever we work with debounced buttons, each time we go through the loop and we want to check the button state, we've got to call the update method on a button. So we're going to say pads square bracket I close square bracket dot update open and close parens. This checks the current status of all of the pad buttons each time we go through our while true loop. Or another way to put that is it gets the current state of each debounced pad. Then in the if statement down here, we're not going to check to see if the touchpad I dot value is true. Instead, we're going to check to see if pads bracket I bracket dot pressed colon is true. And it's true the first time a pad is pressed. Now let's open the serial console. We'll save this. 
And let's try out those pads to see if they're debounced. Zero, one, two, three. Hey, look at this. So we don't have the repeated prints in here. It's only picking up one press at a time. This is looking great. Debouncing successful. And before we move on, I'm gonna double click on my code.py tab and save this to my CircuitPython school folder. And I'm gonna call this mpr121-debounce-pico. Then I can close this and open up code.py back on my CircuitPy volume. So now that you know how to use your MPR-121, I think it's time for a challenge. So in this challenge, you should hook up a NeoPixel strip to your board. We showed how to do that in a prior lesson. I'm gonna use my Pico W board. Here's a wiring diagram in case you need a reminder. I'm gonna use pin GP16 for my signal. Then import the Adafruit colors that are included in the Adafruit underscore LED underscore animations library. Also add our custom colors for indigo and violet. To make things easier, you'll find code for that on our CircuitPython tip sheet at bit.ly slash CircuitPython dash tip sheet. C and P in CircuitPython are capitalized. You'll see the colors list has 12 colors, one for each pad on the NPR 121. Then, when any capacitive touchpad is touched, light up the same color at the same index value for that pad. So, touchpad 0 should light all of the LEDs in red, that's the first color in colors at index 0. Touchpad 11 should light the LEDs in white, that's the last of the 12 colors at the index position 11. Now keep the lights lit as long as a pad is being touched, but if no pads are being touched, then turn off all of the LEDs. I'm going to ask my students to perform two solutions, one with debounced pads, one without. Now the video at the right is showing a demo of what this should look like when it's running. You know how to do this. I have faith in you. Why don't you pause, give this a shot, and let's resume and compare answers. Now let's show solutions both with debouncing and without. And since my debouncing code is already on my board, we'll work with that first. So first let's go get the color code and colors array from the tip sheet at bit.ly slash circuitpython, capital C, capital P, dash tip, dash sheet. And aside for the storage issue that's right up top, these things are organized alphabetically, so I'm going to scroll down and find colors, and I'm going to copy all this code. That's from adafruitleadanimation.color through this colors array defined down here, but not the color wheel. Then I'll head back to Moo, and I'll paste it in just before I configure my MPR121 board. I'll put in a comment, set up colors, then paste it in. And I've got to set up my NeoPixel strip, but I almost forgot, I've got to import NeoPixel first. I'll add NeoPixel to my import. And I'll set this up right below the colors array with strip equals neopixel dot neopixel capital N capital P. And in parentheses, I'll put in the literals board dot GP16, since that's what I'm connected to, comma, and there are 30 lights in my strip. Now getting the lights to show is super easy. I'll just scroll down here to the bottom and right after my print statement, I'll say strip dot fill and in parentheses pass in colors and in brackets I. That means when element I of the pads list is pressed, that if statement right here, I'm going to light up the strip with the colors list element I. Now you might be tempted to use else in here and just say else strip dot fill and pass in black, but we don't want to do else in here. Otherwise, with debouncing, we'd continue to go through the loop and we'd turn things black right away. Instead, what we want to do is we want to perform another if statement. We're going to say if pads in brackets I dot released colon. That's triggered when the finger comes off the pad. And if that happens, we'll say strip dot fill, open and close parens, and pass in black. Now let's open the serial monitor, click on save, and check this out. Moment of truth, let's start touching some pads. Oh, and look at that, we're touching, we're in a rainbow to show up here. And these pads are debounced. Look at this, different colors with every single pad. You stroke your hand across the edge there and you can see all those different numbers, super rainbow popping up. So we've solved the problem using debounced touch pads. Now let's see if we can solve this problem without using the debouncing. First, I'm gonna save the solution to my CircuitPython school folder as rainbow-lights-debounce-mpr121. Then I'll close this tab and I'll load up the touchpad code that we wrote earlier that wasn't using debouncing. I named this mpr121-pico, so I'll load that up, then double click on the tab, and I'm going to save this to my CircuitPy volume as code.py. I'll make sure that I import NeoPixel here. Then I'll put in a comment to set up colors, and let's head back to our browser. We've already got the code that we need highlighted, so I'm going to copy that again, head back to Moo, and paste it in. Then below this, I need to set up my NeoPixel object for the strip. So I'm going to call this strip equals NeoPixel dot NeoPixel, capital N, capital P. And in between parentheses, it's going to be board dot GP16, comma, 30. 
Now I want to light things up as long as something is being touched, but if one of the pads is not being touched, then I want to turn things black. And the way that I'm going to identify if a pad is touched each time we go through the while true loop is I'm going to create a flag called touched, and I'm going to set that equal to false initially. So every time I go through the while true loop, touched starts out as false. But then if I detect a pad has been touched, and that's what I do with if touched pad I dot value, then I'm going to set strip dot fill equals to colors I, but also I'm going to set touched equals to true. And that'll indicate that a pad is currently being touched. Then I'm going to outdent so that I'm even with the for loop. That'll make sure that the code I'm about to write doesn't execute until after I've gone through the for loop through its whole range. And this is where I check to see if I need to turn the pixels black. I'm going to say if touched double equals false colon. And if none of the pads were being touched during this pass through the while true loop, I'm going to say strip dot fill in parentheses black. And just so you know, there's another way to say if touch double equals false. I'm going to comment this out with a hashtag in front and I'm going to say if not touched colon. That's the same as the line above, not just reverses whatever's in the Boolean to its right. So this if statement will be true if touched is not true, meaning touched is false, meaning none of the pads in the NPR 121 were touched during this iteration of while true. You can use whichever statement you find most readable, but know them both. Now let's open the serial console and click save and see how this works. Once again, moment of truth, let's touch those pads. And oh, look at that rainbow. Now, of course, we're seeing the touchpads repeat because we're not debounced here, but this is working great too. So I'm gonna save this to my CircuitPython folder and I'm gonna call it Rainbow Lights NPR 121, no debounce. And I definitely encourage you to go through and perform both of these solutions with debouncing and without debouncing because there are different techniques in each and that'll help make you a stronger CircuitPython programmer. But Pythonista, I hope you feel good about those skills You've now got the MPR-121 in your utility belt of tricks. And you know how to debounce those touchpads. Now use that skill to make something awesome.